Hello, my name's Arthur, I am a trans man, and I am on Grindr, and so I thought that it might be nice to film a video talking about what it's like to be a trans man on Grindr, and to give advice for queer trans guys who are thinking about getting on the app. So what is Grindr? It markets itself as a queer dating app, and I mean, there's a little bit of truth in that. Some people do use Grindr to go on dates, and some people exclusively use Grindr to go on dates. Um, there's also a joke that like many people in the gay male community meet their long-term partners on Grindr, and so it's like, don't ask where so-and-so met their boyfriend, it's off Grindr. Certainly, Grindr can be used to find many real serious connections, but nevertheless I think the primary purpose of Grindr for many people is hookups. It is centered around the gay male community, which means that many of the users on Grindr are gay men, but of course there are also bisexuals, non-binary people, trans women, and of course some of these gay men are trans gay men, like myself. I see myself, obviously I'm there, but I also see all sorts of other gay trans guys who are on the grid, um, so I see them. Grindr, no matter who you are, is going to be a crazy experience. It is a strange app with strange norms, with strange people, it is just weird. And when I talk about Grindr to my straight friends, I think they're always just sort of overwhelmed and surprised that that kind of place can exist. If you are a trans guy, it is strange in a particular set of ways, and there is a particular set of concerns that you might have going into, like, being on that space and being on that app. So I wanted to talk specifically about advice I would have and about what it's like to set up a profile, to send messages, to meet up with people, and walk you through all of that. So my relationship with Grindr. I have been on and off Grindr for around a year now. Earlier in my transition, I remember talking with one of my exes, and he was like, oh, you're hoping to meet up with people, to hook up with people, why don't you get on Grindr? Like, I'm on Grindr. And I was like, well, you're cisgender, so of course you can be on Grindr. I could never possibly be on Grindr. And he was like, well, I don't know, so I don't want to, like, say anything wrong, and he just sort of accepted that. <laughs> and then my, my current partner, uh, I gave him the exact same speech where I was like, I could not possibly be on Grindr because I am a trans man. And he was just like, there are trans men on Grindr, what are you talking about? And I was like, there could not possibly, I just, I cannot. And the reality of it was that I put off being on Grindr until I was ready to be on Grindr. And so, yes, there, ha there are and have been and will continue to be trans men on Grindr, um, and it may or may not be the right stage for you to get on Grindr. I'm really happy that I waited to download the app until I did, because it is important to go on Grindr with a clear sense of what you want, self-confidence, and healthy views around yourself and your body. If you don't have those things, if you're going on Grindr looking for validation, if you're feeling insecure, unconfident, ugly, Grindr will not be good for you, and you will not have a healthy relationship. A uh, silly flex that I have is I think that I have one of the healthy relationships to Grindr of really any of the gay guys I know, cis and trans, because I think I have been really selective about when I've used it, and have deliberately not used it in times when I would have felt vulnerable to the kinds of weirdos that do exist on that app. And so that's also entailed pausing when I've used the app, um, re-downloading only when I feel comfortable, going on it in times when I'm really in the right mindset to go on Grindr. And so I think taking that time to step back and think, are you really ready for Grindr? Do you want to be on Grindr? is really important. There are trans men on Grindr, there have always been trans men on Grindr, but maybe it's not your time to be on Grindr. You don't need to be on Grindr to be a gay trans man or a queer trans man. It's just an option for you. There are so many gay and queer guys who are not on Grindr, because it is not the right place for them. And it is a bad idea to push yourself towards that if you're not ready for it. So take a second and ask yourself the question, why am I thinking about going on Grindr? Is the answer validation from cis gay men? Red light! <laughs> is the answer that you're insecure about your body and wanting someone to tell you're hot? Red light! <laughs> is the answer that you're wanting to explore and try new things? Yellow light! Maybe that's okay, Grindr sometimes can be a really good place for trying out new things, it can also be a risky place for that. Um, is the answer that you want to have sex and you want to have sex now? <laughs> Green light! That is a good use of Grindr. Is the answer that you want to meet queer people and really see who's around? Green light! Grindr is actually a pretty good place to meet a bunch of people all at once, and I know lots of people who have successfully met friends off Grindr. Do you want to use Grindr for another clear, well-defined reason that you are totally aware of and with intention? That's a green light! Um, and that was a weird way to phrase that question, but you know what I mean. You have to think, okay, what is the reason is it a healthy reason? Is it something that this app can provide, or is it something that I need to work on myself and I need to talk with a therapist about? And I see a lot of gay men, both cis and trans, using Grindr for something that it should absolutely not be used for. Um, so just <laughs> be aware. It is a really powerful thing, I think, similar to, I say, alcohol and social media and drugs, where it can be used in a way that's really fun, but it can also be used in a way that's really, really self-destructive. And so you have to be very careful about how you're approaching it, because there really is not another app like Grindr. Okay, that's my 
boring sort of parental rant over. Now onto the fun stuff. How do you use it? How does it work? So I'm gonna do a kind of unhinged thing and actually show you guys my grinder profile. <laughs> um, it's unhinged, you know, I don't know, because normally this is the kind of stuff that's just, just between me and all the men in a thousand mile radius or whatever. Um, but, so I'm obviously not gonna show you guys specifically the grid, which is the set of faces that you see on the app, because those are people who haven't consented to this. Um, but that is the first thing you see when you open up the app. When you open up Grindr, it sorts who sees who you see totally based on distance, which I think is very weird to people and very different from most apps. So the first person you will see is the closest gay person by you <laughs> who's on Grindr or who's been on it recently. People only appear on the grid if they have been active within the last, I think, 15 minutes, or maybe it's the last hour, but if they've been active recently. So you are only seeing people that are like currently on Grindr, essentially which is part of what makes it a more hookup oriented app. Uh, it has to be people that are like looking right now. So you can use filters on Grindr, so you can, you can put in age settings, you can also put in sort of more detailed settings um, for these filters. Let's see, actually I can't really show you the filters without showing you the grid. But anyways, you can put in, you can put in filters for, for age, um, for position, which means like top, bottom, verse, for tribes, so tribes can be things like twink, bear, sober, that kind of thing. And then you can see people who only fall into that category. So for example, I do have like an age filter on, right? I only see people on the grid who are within the ages that I am interested in. That being said, it doesn't need to be reciprocal, which makes Grindr a kind of weird app. I don't want to see people in their 40s, but I get messages all the time from people who are in their 40s because those people are interested in me and they don't have the filter on that I have. Um, so they are seeing me as a 24 year old, even though I am not seeing 40 something year olds. So on Grindr, there is no concept of matching. So you just get messages from people and you will get a lot of messages and those messages will often be quite graphic. I am gonna tell you guys about the norms and what Grindr is like and I'm not endorsing that Grindr should be this way or that it's good this way, but I just think it's, I don't know, I want you to know what you're headed into. So it is typical on Grindr that people will just send nudes unsolicitedly. Is that good? No. Does it happen? Yes. If you are uncomfortable with receiving unsolicited nudes, should you be on Grindr? Probably not, because it will happen to you, and if it's gonna hurt you, I don't want that to happen. So it's just something you should be aware of. On your profile, you get to set a display name, which is also a thing that I think is strange to people that are used to other dating apps. So other dating apps, you you hear a lot of details about someone, what they're like, what their, you know, job is, what they're looking for in a relationship, and then if you have a, you know, if you're interested, you both swipe and you match on that person, and, and you see their name, you see things about them, that is not the case on Grindr. You have these unsolicited messages and you don't know people's names. Okay, that's fine. You're not gonna see the photos with a lot of detail, but that's probably for the best. Okay, so here you have a display name, <laughs> and that's that whole weird thing where you don't see real names on Grindr. The display names sometimes can be your real name. I have put my name as Arthur there before. I would say it is split, in my area at least, equally between real name, so Arthur, first letter, so like A, totally blank, which is what I have right now, A, something indicating your sexual position, um, so that will be sometimes people will just have an arrow that goes up or an arrow that goes down um, to indicate top or bottom. And then sometimes just like total random emoji or random nonsense. So some people will have like a squirrel or an emoji of leaves or a smiley face, that kind of thing. So those are all options. And again, it creates that sort of weird semi-anonymous energy that Grindr has. So then you get to put your photos up. You get to put five photos and they all, you know, get verified by the app that they are not including nudity, but you are able to put show those photos if you want, which you see that I have done uh, because I am happy to be post-op top surgery and I like that about myself. Yep. So one photo will be the one that appears on the grid. That one is the shirtless photo right now because yep, that's what I've done. And then I have these other photos and then I have photos of me and my boyfriend. Some people will have blank profiles and some people will also have no faces on their profile. That's an option for you if you are someone that is quiet about your transness or quiet about your queerness. You can just put a torso or you can just put a blank profile. I would recommend against this and that I think it puts you in a weird vulnerable position where someone can reject you after the fact. Hello, darkness. Okay, <laughs> where someone can reject you after the fact because they don't like what your face looks like. And you learn that immediately because they liked your torso, they messaged you based on the torso, and then when you send the face pic, they don't respond. And I know people that take that approach where they have the torso and where they have that happen. Because it will happen that not everyone is into your face. And I don't know, of course people aren't into me, but I don't wanna know that it's for my face. And that is something you risk if you choose to be a just torso person. Okay, so then the next section is uh, the bio. I have nothing in my bio right now. 
A good chunk of people have nothing in their bio, period. Bios on Grindr are really different than bios on other dating apps. When you get on the app, you can click around and see some examples and maybe start with nothing and then see what it's like in your area and add based on that. They are not like a place where you're like, I mean, sometimes people do this for sure, but it's not like majoring in ecology, excited to see um, where 2023 will take me. Tell me about your favorite book you've read. Like some people put that kind of thing, but that is more rare, even though that might be the case on an app like Tinder. Bios on Grindr tend to be very forward. Um, so this is a good place, if you're a trans guy, to put stuff about your transness. This is again, it's a good place right now to reflect on what your boundaries are as a trans man and what your interactions you're looking for on Grindr might look like. I have historically put here things like when I have had very rigid boundaries around what I want to do sexually, I have put it in my bio. I've just had that out there for the whole world to see because that is kind of the norm on Grindr. And so I have said that like, yeah, there's a time where I would not do PIV with people on Grindr, and so I just said that I, I was only doing anal. And I literally had that in my bio. And so if that kind of thing is, is true or useful to you, you might want to put that there. I see lots of people that will put, say, that they only use condoms. They'll literally put that in their bio, a discussion about condoms, immediately, right there. Because a good number of people on Grindr assume that people are okay not using condoms, and so those people want to make sure that people know, no, really, I want to use condoms. A bio is a good place to put like that you're only looking to meet other trans people, for example, or that you're really just looking for friends, or that you really want to go on a date first. Something that is different from most people on Grindr and that is important for people to know is a reasonable thing to put in the bio. Notoriously, people on Grindr are very bad about reading bios, so it isn't a guarantee that if you put something they're going to respect it or they're going to have read it, uh, but it is a really good option. Then there is the tag section. Okay, so I'm going to try to focus in again, it'll take a second. Okay. I think you can see that. Okay, so here are the tags. The only tags I have chosen right now are trans and FTM, but you can add all sorts of tags. There are tags about sex stuff, there are tags about activities, um, and these are tags that I can't read this, what does it say? Other tags, oh okay, so these are things like, um, this is where like the trans tag was, for example, is in this section here. And so tags are useful because they can be searched on, and because they, they make a marker very clear. So like, when you click on my, my profile, you immediately see the FTM tag, and there's no need for me to disclose that I'm trans because anyone can see it immediately. I have heard some trans men talk about the fact that if you add the FTM tag, that does mean it can be searched. So people that are specifically into trans men, i.e. chasers, uh, can find you easily. That hasn't been my experience. I really haven't had a huge problem with chasers on Grindr. But you might find that, and if that's the case, it might be reasonable to add that you're trans in your bio rather than as a tag. Yeah, tags can be good also, yeah, if you're into very specific things sexually and you want to broadcast that to the world and find someone that wants to do exactly what you want to do sexually, tags are a good place for that. And then there's your age. And then, again, a lot of this stuff is optional, so, um, let's see. So, I, I clicked that I did want to show my age, and then you can, you can put in your height and weight. I did put my height, I didn't put my weight, uh, because I find that kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, you can put in, um, your ethnicity, you can put in your position. This is something that, again, one of my exes was telling me about is your position, it doesn't need to be an identity, you can change it anytime you're on the app. So if you're on, if you're in the mood for one thing when you're on the app, you can put that and then you can change it the next week, it's totally fine, no one is keeping track of you. Uh, and then, you know, then here there's, uh, there's tribes. So tribes are, let's see, Ooh, it's gonna have a hard time focusing on that, I think. Um, yeah. Oh, good. It did. Okay. Yeah, so tribes are... I don't know how to describe that. Uh, I don't know. You can read these. These are all terminologies that you're gonna get used to, I guess, being on the app, but they describe sort of, like, identities, body types, I guess? Um, then there's relationship status, where I have that I'm in an open relationship, and so if anyone is, like, seriously looking to date someone, they might not want to talk with me because of that, and that's great. We have that up front. Um, then here's where you have, again, very explicitly what you're looking for. And this is where, yeah, you want to have reflected and know what you're looking for. So I think I have chat, friends, and right now. Um, and then the options here. There are, I guess, other things that are sort of... I imagine what I didn't check are things related to more serious relationships, because I'm in a relationship and I love him. Um, okay. And then, what else do we have? Ah, yes, then we have a thing about whether you accept... Basically, do you accept nudes? Uh, I think that, yeah, you can totally fill this out, and some people do. Um, I don't know that people read it um, or respect it, which is bad, but that's how it is. Uh, then we have, ah yes, the gender, gender stuff, which is great. 
Um, so I have that I'm a trans man and I have my pronouns here. Awesome. Uh, and then also very cool, Grindr has a section about sexual health stuff. Um, so, yeah, so that's where you can put that you've been, the vaccinations that you've had when you were last tested, and whether you're on PrEP or not, and also your HIV status. So, I am gonna have a whole separate video at some point about sexual health as being a gay trans man. A whole separate video. What I will say right now on this one video is that if you're gonna be on Grindr, you really, really should be on PrEP, and you really, really should have a relationship with some sort of sexual health clinic where you have access to testing. It is important. And also, that testosterone is not a form of birth control. So, that's that. Um, that's said my piece. So Grindr is a total, as I said, crazy place. People use it for whatever. You can go into it and use it for whatever you want. But <laughs> I guess I want to show you what the norms are um, so that you know kind of what, what the expectation is, even if you're going to break those expectations. So I recorded this like fake little conversation um, via this, I don't know, this weird website of an example Grindr conversation that I will now enact for you. Hey cutie, how's it going? Pretty good, just having a lazy Saturday. How about you? Same, I went out last night and I'm still hungover, haha. <laughs> what brings you on? Mostly fun, but I like making friends and meeting people too. Same, haha. <laughs> Wanna trade picks? Sure. Sense album. Sense album. Wow, you're so hot. You too. What are you into? Lists a handful of random sex things. You? Lists a handful of random sex things. In time. I'm pretty free this week. Great, me too. Okay, so this is the kind of conversation that you will have all the time on Grindr, potentially, if you go down that route. And this is the kind of thing that was explained to me by some of my friends and partners that, again, was totally the norms around this, very confusing. Yeah. I remember some tweet I saw where someone w was reminiscing about how on their early days of being on Grindr, when they were asked what they were into, they would respond with their hobbies. And so, um, yeah, this is the kind of thing you just get used to on the app. Uh, the time it takes from finishing off this conversation where you're like, great, like we should meet up to actually meeting up, it can either happen like literally that moment or never, or it can take months. And if it takes months, it's like, <laughs> you're just gonna message each other, hey, 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 over the course of many months. I would say that, I mean, I don't know, but the, the odds at any given interaction where you've like really finished this all out, that it goes on to you literally meeting up is like less than one in four. Like it's pretty, it's, it's not that common that you that you finish out a full conversation and then you actually do schedule to get together. Um, because for a lot of people, they're just on Grindr because they're bored and horny and they're just chatting with no real idea to meet, pe meet up with people. And so if you do really want to meet up with someone, you do kind of have to be like, pushy is the wrong word, but like assertive and be like, hey, like, let's set a time. Hey, how's it going? Like, hey, really, like, let's set a time. And that kind of behavior is okay. You gotta like obviously listen to the vibe. Like if someone isn't down to meet up, they aren't down to meet up. But a lot of people do need a little bit of a nudge and a reminder and like a like, no, I really am interested in you. Like let's actually do it for real. If you aren't interested, let me know. But like, I really am for real. Um, and otherwise it just will sit there forever and ever and ever and you will not meet up. But that's kind of fine too. I have a lot of conversations that went that way and it's just part of the experience of being on Grindr. What is an album? So. I showed you guys the photos that I have on Grindr that are like the main photos everyone can see. Grindr has this other feature that are called albums, and an album is where it is a private set of photos that you send to people, like, you deliberately choose who you send it to. Um, they cannot take screenshots of the album, um, so it's sort of private in that sense and a little more secure. And most people use albums for nudes. They People also use albums for like additional photos of their face that didn't make it in, or for photos which are not nudes but maybe a little more like a little more flirtatious or suggestive, like a shirtless photo, that kind of thing. You don't need to use an album, you don't need to send news on Grindr, you get to choose what you want to do with your body. A lot of people do use Grindr that way and do use albums that way. I think the case that I would make for albums and for how it can actually be a really nice feature is that if there are things that you are insecure about, you can put them right there and you know that you're not going to have a bad experience when you hook up with someone or it makes those odds a lot lower because they really have seen, they've seen you and they're down to hook up with you and you 
if they aren't into it, you'll learn right then rather than learning awkwardly like in person. So I remember around a year ago when I first got on Grindr, I was, it was right before I had top surgery. And so I was taping my chest with trans tape. Um, so I had like these pieces of tape across my chest. And I was pretty insecure about that. And I was like, man, like I just really wish I, it's really excited to be post top surgery. I really hated that. But even though I wasn't a big fan of it, I put a photo of me shirtless with my tape on in my album. And so that way, when people responded and were like, wow, you're so hot, I knew that they actually didn't mind my tape at all. I minded it, but they didn't mind it. And so when we went to meet up, I wasn't worried about, oh, are they going to be freaked out by my tape? Because I knew that they had already seen my tape and they were okay with it. And so that can go for really any feature, right? If you are, if you're a top and you're going to top with a prosthetic, it can be nice to have a photo of that so that people know what they're getting into. And it really takes out some of that insecurity and worry. Uh, and often people, again, exchange these albums mutually, so you're also seeing rather vulnerable photos of them, and it's, there's kind of an understanding if you're on Grindr that that's what's going on. So I think that's the, that's the pitch for using them, and especially as a trans person, right, with a body that sometimes people wouldn't expect or that, that is different. It's, I think it can be nice to be so upfront about what you look like so that you know people are okay with the fact that you're trans and are really excited about your body. Okay, so on this note, it is very important to reflect on your boundaries, and I so on this note, it is really important to reflect on your boundaries and establish very clear boundaries before you get on Grindr. People will not know what words to use to talk about your body. <laughs> they will not know at all. I think it is a reasonable expectation if you're going on Grindr to hope that people will be respectful when you correct them and you tell them how you want your body to refer to. It is not a reasonable expectation to hope that people will off the bat know your preferences. They won't. So I'm trans, I have a frontal right, I have had people use every single possible word to refer to it just under the sun. I have had people who've known the trans slang and used the trans slang to refer to it. I have had people who have used the correct anatomical words to refer to it. I have had people use gay male slang to refer to it. I have had people use female coded slang to refer to it. Everything possible, every word you've ever heard, they have used to refer to it. There was a time in my life, before I was on Grindr, where I was pretty uncomfortable and dysphoric about those parts. And I was very particular about the words that I wanted to be used to talk about my body. And hearing, that, hearing those words at all that weren't the right kind of word would be really upsetting to me. And so I think it is good that I was not on Grindr when I was sort of in that headspace. Because I, I would have received those words and it would have felt really bad. Now, I honestly don't really care what words people use. I have some preferences, and so I guide people towards the words that I, that I like. Um, but I find that people that do have preferences, again, we'll put it right out in their bio and be very clear with it up front. So I've talked with, again, my trans friends who do have preferences, and um, I, I'm thinking about one, one, one I guess, acquaintance um, was talking about how in his bio he, he uses the word, word man cave as, as an expression, and so people will message him and say man cave because they, they saw that in the bio. Um, and so if you have a preference, you should say it out front, uh, outright. People will not know, they will not be correct, and they do not know the right, the right words. Um, and similarly, you should really reflect on what sex acts you are interested in doing and what things you are down to do if you're going to use Grindr as a hookup app. I think I said this earlier, but like there was a time where I didn't want to do PIV with anyone off Grindr, and so I had that in my bio, I was pretty clear about it, and people were respectful about it. They were not pushy about it, and when they were, I would just block them. It was pretty easy because I was very clear about that boundary. So it worked out very well. That was great. I think that if I'd had that boundary in the back of my head but wasn't saying it outright, I might have ended up in a little worse situations um, than I did because I had reflected on it and I knew what I wanted. I think it's also worth saying, and again, but just so you know, what people typically expect when they see a trans guy on Grindr. Um, I think that, again, these things are probably not all true about you, but when people see a trans man, they think that he exclusively bottoms, um, specifically, they think that he bottoms PIV and is down with that. I think people tend to think that trans men are submissive and that trans men like giving but not receiving oral. And also, again, baseline assumption on the app that they're down to not use condoms. If any of those things are really not true about you, I think it is good to really keep in mind that you're going to have to tell people and correct people and make sure they're on the same page as you. So I have lots of trans male friends and I've talked with them about their experiences on Grindr and really the experiences vary a lot based on what our preferences are and who we are and what we're like. And so some of my friends who are tops really do have to very much assert, like, no, that is what I do. Like, I do not, I do not bottom, I do not do PIV, I don't. And it, again, I think that often works out fine for people, but they have to be very clear because people have a different expectation going into the app 
of what trans men like to do, and they they just assume those things. And so if, if the assumptions are wrong, you have to tell people. But again, the average experience on Grindr is pretty weird. So I think, I think it's really important to keep in the back of your mind that some things that you might attribute to being trans are just due to the fact you're talking to someone on Grindr. Men on Grindr sexualize everyone. It is an app that is sexual. And so they're going to make some assumptions about you sexually, and some of them will be right and some of them will be wrong, but they make those same assumptions about cis people too. I think it's particularly extreme because a lot of people don't have many experiences with trans people, and some of them will tell you that, right, very upfront, that they, that they have never talked with a trans guy before, blah blah blah. But they make assumptions all the time about people on this app, and they talk with people very crassly all the time on this app. And so I've had various experiences that I was like, oh, it's definitely because I'm trans. But I realized a lot of my experiences on this app are because I look really young. And some of my friends who are trans men who have beards, totally different experience. Totally different set of expectations that come from people. My friends who are tops, totally different. My friends who are more androgynous than me, totally different. So everyone is going to have their own crazy weird grinder experience, and I think it's just important to keep in mind like who, what you are, what you want, and to be clear about that. You do not want random men on grinder to push you into some bucket that isn't what's meant for you. Okay, so I think advice that is useful whether you are cis or trans is that you do not have obligations to these random people on grinder. If someone is being creepy to you, you should block them. So the block function on Grindr is something that was explained to me again very quickly on by some of my friends who are on Grindr, is really easy to use. You don't need to offer any explanation to the app, you just sort of click on the profile and you click block, their messages will go away, they can't message you anymore, you don't see their profile, they don't see your profile, they're gone. You should be liberal with the block function. Um, people, again, if you're like actively using the app, often people will block more than one person a day. And so the kinds of people you're going to block are people that are pushing your boundaries or that send weird messages or that creep you out. And again, you'll get blocked too. It's fine. It's just part of the app. You also don't need to respond to every message, especially messages that are weird or especially messages that are, yeah, especially messages that are weird. You don't need to respond. The app doesn't have that sort of like um, both people agreed and match function, right? So you get, you get messages from total randos. I will get messages from people who are like a thousand miles away. I don't know how they found me, but they message me and I just don't respond. I do not have the time for that. I don't respond. And you don't need to explain to someone why you're not interested. I think a really nice message to send often is a sort of a courtesy like, sorry, not interested. And if they send why, you don't need to explain. It's not on you to do that. And you don't, you don't need to say not interested. I think I typically do if someone messages me many times because at that point I'm like, okay, like they should just know. Um, often you'll get no response. So when I message people first, yeah, sometimes I'll get a response, sometimes I won't, and sometimes I'll get not interested, right? Those are all options and it's, it's all fine. It's also, again, useful to kind of manage your boundaries around Grindr. I think turning off notifications is a really useful thing, so that way you're only going on Grindr when you actually like want to be on Grindr. It also can be useful to use this block function um, if you happen to encounter anyone in your professional circle or someone that you don't want to see you on Grindr, you can just block them. Again, don't take it personally, it's just part of how the app works. Uh, I think one of the reasons that I've had very good experiences on Grindr is that I've been super selective in who I've talked with. Because again, not obligated to talk with every person. I think that it can be clear to me within a couple messages if the person has good vibes, and if they do, I keep talking with them, and if they don't, I just move on. Um, or I just say I'm not interested. Uh, another good option for if you are, yeah, considering Grindr, um, but are a little like anxious or nervous about this, is, is you can specifically be T for T and search out trans people specifically. There are a lot of trans people on these apps. I would say that there are slightly more trans women than trans men, but there are a lot of both. There are also a lot of non-binary people. And so I know several friends who use Grindr almost exclusively, T for T. I also know people on Grindr who will literally list that they have a preference for bisexuals. That all happens. You get to choose who you speak with and you don't really need to justify it. Um, if you do end up meeting up with people, I think that it's really important to keep in mind physical safety, especially if you're you know, early in all of this. So make sure that a friend knows where you're going. Sometimes it can be nice to meet up in a public place at first, uh, but make sure someone's looking out for you. Uh, because there really is a norm here of like going over to strangers' apartments at 1 a.m. Um, and that's got some real risks to it, right? But yeah, I think all in all, Grindr can be a really great app for getting a lot of interactions with people. You have a lot of opportunities for hookups. Again, it's a huge set of people. So 
you can be any kind of person and you might find someone that's ex they're exactly interested in your specific type. And that's really cool. Um, it's a lot sort of more efficient in that sense than just going out to the bar because you have so many people that are looking at you. And that can be really fun. It can also be very overwhelming, but it can be fun. So you have a lot of opportunity to meet people, you can meet friends, all sorts of connections I've had in my life have come out of Grindr. And I've, I've honestly, again, really had a good time using the app. And again, a lot of it is like, if someone says something transphobic, I just block them. I just move on. I don't need to educate them. I don't need to explain. I just move on. And so because of that, I've had very, very few transphobic interactions on Grindr because I just don't begin them. I just, I just don't. Um, and I hope that might be your experience too. I think if you go into Grindr with a clear view of what you want, with clear boundaries, and with a lot of self-confidence, you can have an amazing time on Grindr regardless of who you are. Um, okay, so that's essentially all the advice that I have. <laughs> I hope you have a good experience and at least a memorable one on this uh, crazy app.